Hi, welcome back to Cinesum. This movie name will be revealed at the end, please watch till the end. A youthful couple moves into their new apartment, as Rob, the hubby, brings a many boxes over into the place his woman, Gail, tells him about a stinky old refrigerator in the corner that the landlord left before, Rob finds it fascinating. Noting how the motor is above rather of underneath like refrigerators these days, since hot air rises, he comments that it doesn't make sense to put the motor under, allowing the hot air it produces to go up the refrigerator. Still, Gail slightly pays attention, and she simply agrees to the effects Rob says. She also brings out a bottle of wine and asks her hubby if he wants to drink. Rob gets agitated and opens the old fridge to get some ice. Still, the freezer is bulked up with frost, but he still manages to get a little cell of ice. The couple also makes a short toast to their new life together. Before Rob could take a belt of his drink, he notices commodity inside the ice. He takes it out of the glass and shows it to Gail, asking her to confirm what's inside the ice cell. Gail looks near and becomes just as surprised as her hubby, wanting to confirm what she saw. Gail grabs a magnifying glass to check the ice cell nearly. Unexpectedly, inside it's a vomic mammoth with pike staffs in its body. Gail prodigies if there are further of these effects in the freezer, so she opens it. She snappily takes out the junk outside and gets shocked by what she sees. With this, Rob takes a peep and commentary there is a misplaced civilization in their refrigerator. True enough, the freezer contains a model. Working medieval mega city. Everything inside moves so presto. With the little people going through their day typically, innocent by the two titans swimming near their mega city. In unbelief, Gail claims that what's passing doesn't make sense, and Rob agrees. She also clarifies that they are seeing an early medieval mega city. When woolly monsters failed out eventually in the late Neolithic period, Rob shrugs it off and simply agrees with his woman. To hide his ignorance, latterly on, Rob buries the frozen mammoth in a pot of dirt. Rob seems sad about it. So Gail lightens up the mood and says that it will presumably make for a good toxin. Curiosity takes over, and the two check the freezer again. To their surprise, everything has changed drastically. What habituated to be a medieval mega city is now a modernized place during the Industrial Revolution. Manufactories and roads are erected, covering the freezer's sky with bank. The couple notes that they've only been gone for 10 twinkles, but decades have formerly gone by for the atomic people. With this, Gale theorizes that time moves else inside the freezer. As they witness the industrial revolution at great speed, Rob is disappointed that they missed the renaissance period. He notices two atomic men sitting by a structure under construction and prodigies if the people perceive them as gods. Still, the men are actually making fun of them, seeing them as weird faces in the sky that are gaping at the mega city. One man indeed comments that he is tired of seeing the broccoli that is stuck in Gale's teeth. Seconds laterally, streamlined structures are erected. Rob notices effects flying around and Gale identifies them as aeroplanes. Dot as further towers are erected, Gale believes that the atomic people have reached the present time. Rob confirms this when he sees a Starbucks store in commentary, that the cafe really pops out far and wide. Just also, he notices commodity weird, so he takes a near look. Suddenly, a bullet falls into the middle of the mega city and explodes. The explosion hangouts Rob, making him back down and fall onto the bottom. Gale helps him up and tells him to calm down, but Rob panics, blurting that politic nukes are exploding in their freezer. Still, Rob's face is as red as a tomato, and Gale could slightly keep a straight face. As the freezer explodes with huge nuclear losers, Gale hands a canned descent toaster oven to her hubby letting him see how the heat from the explosion caused his face to gleam red. Rob groans, but also he notices that the situation in the freezer just came worse. The couple gapes at it as they hear riots, shots, and explosions. With this, Gail closes the freezer and says that the people cannot conceivably outgrow warring a couple of twinkles. Hearing this, Rob asks what they should do, and Gail responds that they should order pizza. Laterally that night, the couple has pizza for regale. While they stay for the situation to be down, an hour has passed, and Rob recommends that they should check out the freezer. He hopes that the atomic people had a chance to rebuild their mega city, but Gail gently tells him that they need to embrace the possibility that they did not make it. Still, Rob goes to the freezer and opens it anyway. To their surprise, the freezer glows with luminous metropolizes and flying buses. Gail claims that it looks like the Emerald City but with lower emerald and further futuristic bias. The sight of this makes Rob rapturous, marveling at how beautiful everything is. Suddenly, a structure emerges right in front of them, and Rob jokes that it looks like an adult toy. Just also, everything escalates, and a massive aggregate appears in the middle of the futuristic megacity. It glows brightly and consumes power from the islands attached to it. 
Ultimately, it turns into a diamond-shaped fort and consumes the whole mega city until it bursts into a ball of energy. The majestic energy explodes like a star, and stripes of light begin to zoom around Rob and Gail's kitchen, filling their apartment with light. The stupendous light fascinates them both. During this period, it seems like the atomic people have figured out the secrets to time and space trip. After this, the stripes of light return to the freezer, gather into a sphere, and vanish. This wipes out the grins on Rob's and Gail's faces, confused at what they just witnessed. Rob prodigies if the atomic people will ever return, but Gail thinks it's doubtful. Because of this, Rob dolefully pulls the refrigerator's draw, as if he's accepting that those bitsy people will no way return. Knowing that Rob has grown fond of the atomic people, Gail hugs him in comfort. She also closes the freezer, deciding to call it a day. The coming day, Rob pours their mugs of coffee and hands one to Gail. Without saying a word to each other, both wonder about the atomic civilization in their freezer. With the fewest bit of stopgap that the atomic people are still alive, they open the freezer again to find cold mist pouring out despite it being unclogged. Outside, they witness another ice age where primitive sapiens consume the corpse of a potent brontosaurus. It seems like life in the freezer has renewed, and it is now returned to the age of the dinosaurs. Just also, a roar cautions the sapiens of the arriving Tyrannosaurus rex. The sapiens run as one is caught between the dinosaurs' teeth. The last sapiens tumbles with the T-Rex ending in, submersing for the kill. Numerous claims that the freezer is like a fun macrocosm that shows how life evolves to the point of leaving reality. Some may suppose that the freezer showed the end of their world, but it could also mean that the atomic humans set up a different dimension to live in. It's uncertain how numerous times this process of life passed in the old freezer, or if it always plays out the same way. The former possessors may have seen life bloom and die constantly, ultimately getting wearied of it, therefore leaving the extraordinary freezer before. Although the show Noe revealed who created life inside the freezer, an occasion named God Serengeti by Oat Studios, might just suggest who did. A herd of mammoths peregrination across a field, but their field is on a table in the middle of a mysterious man's study. The old man doesn't pay attention to this, as he's busy reading a book. His butler, Jeffrey, asks how the book is, and the man comments that it's too specialized, adding that he prefers chaos. Still, he likes a form for a black hole from the book. He turns his attention to the little beings in his fun world and laughs at an atomic man who's rubbing two sticks together. Suddenly, the homogenized discovers how to make fire, and the old man is maddened. He complains that he didn't say those people could do such a thing, because he's supposed to give fire. Jeffrey notes that the current time period is before they re-supposed to give them fire. Because of this, the old man orders Jeffrey to put the fire out, so the butler blows onto the table creating the wind that snuffs out the deers. Still, the old man is pissed, so he tells Jeffrey to put them back into their grotto's dot. The butler obeys, so he triggers the mammoths to stampede towards the humans, forcing them to hide. After it's done, the old man is still irked at what just happened, so he plans to shrink the smarts of the bitsy beings to help them from making their own choices. Not long after, the homo sapiens exit the delve, again to perform a rain cotillion dot. Jeffrey reminds him that they haven't turned off the failure, so the old man orders him to spot some water on the parched little effects. Jeffrey happily obliges and sprays water over the table, causing it to rain on the field. He comments that their god is merciful as the homo sapiens rejoice. The old man giggles at the sight of their excitement, so he orders his safe butler to spray more water. As Jeffrey does so, new shops begin to sow from the little field. Eventually, he is had enough of this fun and the old man tells Jeffrey to release the pest. The butler hesitates, but the old man is adamant about ending this little game. With no choice, Jeffrey opens an antique box and takes a fancy bottle from it. With furrowed brows, Jeffrey sprays this over the homo sapiens, and one by one, the people collapse as they take their final breaths. The old man simply watches this from over his book before continuing with his reading. This story about creation depicts God as both merciful and enduring. While he provides water for the thirsty beings on his table, he also takes their lives in a snap. Once he's tired of watching them, both love, death, and robots Ice Age and God Serengeti present their own performances of God such like beings. Rob and Gale watch life grow and die without intervention, but with sympathy for the societies they substantiation. In discrepancy, the other presents a more involved God who's apathetic to the lives on his table, treating them as entertainment that he can simply turn dot. This is a sci-fi and fantasy show called Love, Death and Robots. Ice Age, thank you for watching. Subscribe to watch more scene summaries like this, turn on notifications and press the like button to support us.